Let's read chapter five. We have learned a lot of vocabulary words. Ennui, cajole, indefatigable, and the new one, incognito. Incognito. With the identity disguised or hidden, Miss Pigeon read to the class from the dictionary. So our room mother doesn't want us to know who she is? Or he, she added, remembering Bailey Stevenson's father was room mother one year. It's a she, Gunnybird said. I think it's okay to tell you that, but you're right. She wants to be a secret. How did you cajole her? Trisha asked. Is it my mom? I couldn't cajole her. How did you? Cajole means to talk somebody into something. Is it mine? Barry asked. I bet it's mine. Did you pay her? Tyrone asked. If you paid her, it's mine. <laughs> My lips are sealed, Goony Bird said. Maybe it's mine, Keiko said. Maybe mine, whispered Felicia Ann. Oh, I hope mine. Malcolm was rolling a piece of paper into a tube that looked like a telescope. Malcolm had a very hard time keeping his hands still. He called out loudly, If it's my mom, and if she brings those three babies to this school, I'm, I'm... He scowled and sputtered and wrinkled his face and couldn't decide just what he would do. Sealed, Goony Bird repeated. What are your baby's names? Felicia Ann asked Malcolm. I love babies. I'm not saying, Malcolm replied with a scowl. My lips are sealed. Mrs. Pigeon began to laugh. Well, class, Malcolm is not going to reveal the triplets' names and Goonie Bird is not going to reveal the identity of our room mother, though I somehow suspect that it might be someone who has decided that she doesn't want to be chef at the White House. She looked at Goonie Bird, who shook her head. Mm -mm. Tightly sealed, she said. Well, I am delighted that we have one, Miss Pigeon said, and I will notify Mr. Leroy. But, Goonie Bird, would you tell us, without revealing the name, of course, the absolutely true story of how you cajoled her? Goonie Bird nodded. I guess I could do that, she said. She was already standing in the center of the room, and she began to take deep breaths. Hmm, as she always did when beginning a story. The pilgrims and Native Americans all sat down on the floor. Keiko clapped her hands in delight. Malcolm stopped rolling the piece of paper into a tube. Her Barry crept over to his desk and sat down quietly. Miss Pigeon turned around on the piano bench to listen to the story. How Goonie Bird Got a Room Mother is the title, Goonie Bird began. Sometimes, she explained, a title should be a little mysterious. It should make you wonder what the story is about. I could have called this one an exciting phone call, maybe. Incognito, Barry called from the back, from his desk. That would have been a good title. Goonie Bird nodded. Yes. Yes, it would. Good for you, Barry. I might change my title later. You can do that. The title you use first is called a working title. And my working title is How Goonie Bird Got a Room Mother. She looked down at herself. You know how usually in stories I try to describe the main, what the main character looks like and what she is wearing? The children nodded. They had heard Goonie Bird tell many stories before. Well, she said, in this story, the main character is me. And as you can see, today I am wearing tap shoes, blue tights, red Bermuda shorts, and an embroidered peasant blouse from Bavaria. Bavaria, murmured Felicia Ann. I never heard of Bavaria before. It's quite an interesting outfit, I think, Goonie Bird said. It's quite interesting outfit, I think, Goonie Bird said, but I've decided that it will not be included in the story. This story is going to be an all dialogue story. No description. Class, Miss Pigeon said, and she went to the board and wrote the word dialogue. For a few minutes, the room was silent, except for the pages of dictionaries turning. I found it, called Ben. Words used by characters in a book or a story, Goonie Bird said. Okay, I'm going to begin. There are only two characters in this story. One is Goonie Bird and the other one is 
Oh, don't tell. She doesn't want you to tell, several children called. Mrs. X, I'll call her, Gunnybird said. And I'm starting my story with the sound effect. Listen. Ring, ring. Hello, Mrs. X said when she answered the telephone. Hello, said Gunnybird Green. I am calling from Water Tower Elementary School. Yes, my goodness, is something wrong at the school? asked Miss X. I think it was my mom, Keiko said. She always worries. She worries about chicken pox, dirty restrooms, and earthquakes. My mother worries too, said Tricia. Mine worries about kidnappers and unfriendly dogs. Mine worries about undercooked hamburgers, said Ben. Mine too, and swimming too soon after lunch. And wasps, said Chelsea. Not mine, Malcolm said glumly. My mom only worries about those triplets and diaper rash. Please tell their names, Malcolm. I love babies, Felicia Ann said in her soft voice. No, they're incognito too. Class, Gunnybird said impatiently, you are interrupting the story. Dialogue is supposed to flow smoothly along. Sorry, everyone replied. But you did remind me of something, how much all moms worry about their children. So I'm going to interrupt the dialogue and insert something about that. What's that called when you do that, asked Beanie. Goonie Bird thought and then shrugged. I don't know, she said, and she looked at the teacher. Miss Pigeon? What is that when an author inserts something and talks about something in the middle of a story? Miss Pigeon thought. Then she said, that would be called an uh, authorial intrusion, I think. When another story intrudes, when an author intrudes to say something that really isn't part of the story. But I'm not even going to write that on the board. It isn't important. Well, here I go. Starting up again, Goonie Bird said. She took a deep breath and continued. All mothers worry about their children. Not only human mothers, but animals. Once I had a cat who was looking for her kittens and got very upset if they strayed too far away. Now picture if that cat was a human and her children went to school every day and she didn't know what was going on at school. And suddenly someone called and said, Goonie Bird stopped and looked around, looked around. Malcolm started rolling his paper again and Felicia Ann seated on the floor, put her head down on her knees and Chelsea yawned. Sorry, Goonie Bird said, that is why authors shouldn't intrude. It's boring. Back to the dialogue. No, Mrs. X, said Goonie Bird, there is nothing to worry about. I am calling with a request. And what might that be? Not a solicitation for money, I hope. Mrs. X's voice sounded suspicious. I bet it's my mom, said Beanie. She hates when the phone rings and someone's asking for money. Goonie Bird glared at Beanie. Sorry, Beanie said. No, I'm calling to tell you that you have been selected for a great honor. Right, said Mrs. X. The last time I got a call like that, they told me I had won a trip to Las Vegas. But then it turned out that I was supposed to pay taxes and handling charges and buy a membership in something. I think a health club. It's my mother, Barry announced loudly. I'm sure it's my mother. No, it's mine, said Tyrone. She almost bought a timeshare in Mexico and it was a big scam. It's my mother, Nicholas and Tricia said together. Goonie Bird glared at all of them. And when the room fell silent, she continued her story. Goonie Bird explained very care patiently. No, she said, this is truly a great honor, not a scam at all. You have been chosen as room mother for Mrs. Pigeon's second grade class. Mrs. X was silent for a moment. She was dumbfounded. She was overcome. Are you still there? Goonie Bird asked. Yes, said Mrs. X. So may I tell everyone? You said that? Said what? asked Mrs. X. Yes, you said yes. I only meant that yes, I'm still here. Please, please say yes, Goody Bird said, because I then I get to be Squanto. If I find the room mother, I get to be Squanto. Mrs. X still didn't speak. And the principal will stop bugging Mrs. Pigeon, Goody Bird added. The principal is doing that, asked Mrs. X in an outraged voice. Indeed he is, Goony Bird replied. Mrs. X didn't speak. Now the only thing you have to do is provide cupcakes, and you can come to the Thanksgiving pageant if you want, and sit in a seat of honor. And also, Goonie Bird looked at Miss Pigeon, I hope you don't mind. I said the next thing without asking your permission, Miss, Miss Pigeon. What was that? Miss Pigeon asked. I hope you didn't say she'd be paid. You know we don't pay anything. I'll continue, Goonie Bird said. And also, Miss Pigeon, who wrote quite a fine song about succotash, 
we'll compose a second song and its title will be Room Mother. <laughs> Miss Pigeon began to laugh. All right, she said, I can do that. Gooniebird looked relieved. Phew, she continued. And, Gooniebird told Mrs. X, we will all sing the song to you at the end of the Thanksgiving pageant. There was silent at the, silence at the other end of the telephone. Then, Gooniebird looked at the class. Guess the next word, she said. Suddenly, they all shouted out. They'd learned from Gooniebird how important the word suddenly could be. You got it, Gooniebird continued. Suddenly, Mrs. X started to laugh, and she said, yes, I'll do it. Thank you, thank you, Gooniebird told her. On one condition, Mrs. X added. What is that? Until Thanksgiving, I'm incognito. My lips are sealed, said Gooniebird. That end. The class clapped at that story. Yes, like that. Gooniebird bowed. Yes, like that. Mrs. Pigeon smiled. Gooniebird, she said, you are Squanto for sure. She gets to be Squanto. Yes, because she found the room, Mother JR. <laughs>